my name is Bokis. Firstly, have you subscribed to my channel? If you haven't done that, make sure you do that now. And also, have you joined us on Facebook, Sewing Innovations? If you have not, just take your time to go to Facebook and search for Sewing Innovations. It's a lovely group where we put up illustration on some outfit. Today, we will be making a tutorial on hot shoulder. I've got a lot of requests to make a tutorial on that. And trust me, it is so easy, just like every other tutorials I have made. A lot of people have been contacting me about the beginner's class and intermediate class. It is very much on. Because I'm seriously planning for the advanced class. And trust me, it's going to be hot. Really, really hot. So, just contact me about the beginner's class. If you have the interest, it is on. Because I decided to start all over again so that we can all move over to the advanced class. So right now, let's go over to our work table and start drafting our hop shoulder top. Right now, we will assume this is our fabric. It is folded. Just fold by the widest part of your body circumference and add like 3 inches to it. Hop shoulder, to, de to determine how hop you want your shoulder measurement is, it depends on the wideness of your neck. But first, let us deal with the vertical measurement. Then you have to decide how low you want your shoulder, your half shoulder touch to. Uh, how. So once you determine how low your your top wants to be, like for instance, I want it to be five inches low. You just that's where you will start from from your, on your measuring tape. So right now I want my top to be as low as five inches. So I will start drafting with 4.5, so that by the time I turn in with half inch seam allowance, I will have 5. So if you want it to be 6, you start from 5.5. So now, since I want mine to start from 5 inches, so I will start from 4.5. So just put 4.5 on the edge of your fabric like this. Can you see that? After doing that, just go to, your, to half of your hand hole. So this is half of my hand hold here. The next thing is my bust point. That is if you want a busty, you can't do that. But if you just want a classic one, you could just go straight to your waist. But let's just assume we want to do a busty. That's my bust point. Then I will go to my under bust, then the waist, then the hip. If you want to make a peplum top, you stop at the waist. So, then the next thing is my hip and the length of my top. Then I will make it into a straight line. Right now, I have made it into a straight line. So, I will go over it again. I said I want my neck depth, that is how deep I want my neck to be, to be 5 inches. But I started from 4.5 because of half inch seam allowance. So, from this 4.5, then I will take my vertical measurement, starting from the normal uh, beginning of the tape. So 4.5, then my chest line, which is half of my hand hole. This is my bust point line. This is my under the bust line. This is my waist line. This is my hip line. And this is where I want my top to hang. The next thing is to take half of your bust pan measurements. And mine is 5. So I will start from my bust point. And then I will draw this into a straight line. Can you see that? After determining that, if you want just a normal way that, then you can just insert your dart here and connect. Then some people draw it, the line straight up, but I don't do that because that is why you see some people's bust here coming towards the middle. It looks funny if you draw a, the straight line. So at the upper part, you have to have extra one inch to it or even half an inch, depending on how much that you want to take from the upper part. So now let's go back to our paper. My, so my half of my bust pan is 5 inches, it's 4.5 then half inch for sewing allowance because I'm assuming this is my fabric. So here now at the upper part, I will be adding 
one inch to it. So that will make it six inches. Can you see that? So here will be six inches and then I will connect to my bust point. Can you see that? After doing that, we can take in our darts. So depending on which one you want, if you want a classic and if you want it to go in under the bust, I've explained that several times and I will advise you to watch my tutorial on how to how to draft the princess in shoulder from the shoulder. So try to do that and I'll try to put the link in the description box below. So right now I will show you on paper. So at the waist, I'll just go in half an inch here, half an inch here. At the Honda bust, I will do one and quarter, which is here. Well, let me do three quarter. I'll just do three quarter. Since I did half an inch on both sides, so I'll just do three quarter here. And then three quarter here. And I will join this point. And then I will come down by one inch here. And then I will connect. I advise people to come down by one inch from the bust point because I deliberately made the research on that. So it was totally my idea because I made a lot of research because it is the area around the bust. So I will always advise you to do that too. And after doing that, I can. So now the line goes straight to the hip. And this will be our first topic in the advanced class. We will be drafting on our fabric, cutting, sewing. So if you are interested, start planning towards our advanced class. So right now I'm done with this. So the next thing is to insert our horizontal measurement. So quarter of my bust. Of course, let us finish with the upper part to make it easier for you. So right now, the width, I told you if you want a very hot shoulder, it is your neck width that will determine it. If you want it not too hot, it is your neck, neck width that will determine that. So for myself, I will be making a neck width of 5 inches. But I just want to show you this I made for a student of mine. Like this, I made 6.5. And by the time I put it on, it was somewhere around here. It was so off. I make a neck width of 6.5 and it was so off, it was here. So it depends. So if you want it to be 5, so the more you reduce it, the higher it goes. Like this is... 6.5 and you can see it is so hot so when i put it on it's something like this so that was why i said it is your neck width that will determine how hot your garment will be so now since we have determined our neck width so then i will go over to take out my dart hair it depends on what you want if you want one inch on both side half an inch three quarter on both sides it depends on you but let's just do one inch anyway so one inch is here and one inch is here. So the next thing is to connect it to the boss point. I'll just come up by one inch from here, which is here, and then I will connect. So after doing that, so my neck depth is five inches. So whatever you are taking out from here, this is 2 inches. So that will make it 7 inches. After that, you can add your seam allowance. Then you insert it here. I'll go over that again. My neck width is 5 inches. And remember, we took 1 inch from both sides here. So that makes it 7 inches. So my 7 inches is here. Then we need half inch seam allowance when you are sewing. So that will make it seven and a half. So that is here. Then we'll go over to our horizontal measurement. So quarter of my bust is 10.5. Then here I will measure whatever is being taken out from this that. Here I have half inch, so that will make it 11 inches. And then you need 
half an inch on both sides to join it together that makes it 12 then we need seam allowance to join to the back fabric so that makes it 13 which is here then i go over to my waist quarter of my waist is nine plus one inch for the dart making 10 then one inch to join it together making 11 and then one inch to for the side seam allowance making 12. Then I'll go over to the hip. Quarter of my hip is 11 plus 1 inch to sew it together. That makes it 12. Then for the side seam, that makes it 13. Then I'll hand it together. And then my hip curve. The tools are still available if you are interested. Just get in touch with me to get yours. So now we are done with that. Then I will take my hand hole and then use the side of your hand hole to connect. And we are done. So the next thing is to cut it out. talk about the neckline for people that don't want it to be straight like this you can decide to leave it straight or you can decide to even go deeper for the type of neckline you want you can do you can leave it straight like this you can do six seven depending on what you want so if you want let's say you want six inches remember we started from 4.5 here so if you want six inches you just start from here so then you can just draw your neckline. So depending on where you, if you want it before, you can just start from here. If you want it, anyhow you want it. If you want a sweetheart neck, you just go this way, for instance. You see that? So depending on what you want, but I will just leave it straight like this. So this is the side. And then we'll take off the dots. So now I will show you before going to the back. So now this is what it looks like. Can you see that? This is what the front panel look like so in case you want a, a sweet up neck or a normal neck so that will go this way like we did it and then it will go over to this part so this part will be cut off so now we'll go over to the back pattern so right now for the back i will just do a normal waist that for the back remember for the back you need one inch seam allowance so do not forget to leave that so then you go to your chest line, waistline, hip, and then the length of the top. And then you take in your that. So before the neck, let's just go to our horizontal measurement. So quarter of my chest is 10.5. Then I will add extra one inch to that. So it will be here. Then to the waist, nine plus one for the that. That makes it 10 plus size seam allowance. 11 then to the hip that will be 12 and then i'll connect then we we'll go over to the neck remember our neck width 
was 5 inches. Note we are not taking any dart from here because it is normal waist dart. So it's 5 inches. Then we'll add half an inch seam allowance to that. So that will make it 5.5. .5. So after the 1 inch seam allowance, you had. So this is my 5.5. .5. But for the front, remember we made. So for the front, we did 7.5. That was because we took out 2 inches that from there. So now to show you that it corresponds with the back. Remember, we will take half an inch to sew this and this together. So now we we'll overlap it by half an inch. And then you check it out. Can you see? Can you see it matches with the 5.5 .5 at the back? So that means we are on track. So the next thing now is to map out the ham hole with the edge of your ham hole curve. So we are as good as done. So this is if you are having a normal waist that. So if you, are, if, you, if you want this same waist that for the front, you do it this same way. So right now we will cut out the back panel. So this is for the zipper. So you can leave the back this way, or you can do a sweet up. Um, you can just go in deeper at the back. It's not advisable you do a sweet up neck at the back. So although I, when I finish, I will show you in case you want to cut for the sweet up neck. So right now we we'll go over to the sleeve. So right now for the sleeve, you fold your fabric this way. Remember for the Neck depth, we took out 4.5. So what you do is just measure that 4.5, measure it on your sleeve this way. 4.5, which is here. Can you see that? Just note that. Then we'll go over to our caps height. If you don't know how to calculate your caps height, try to check my video on how to draft a basic sleeve pattern. It is essential. So people's cap height is 3.5, some is 3, 3 quarter, some is 4.2, 4.3, depending. So try to calculate your own cap height. Mine is 4 inches, which is here. And then the length of my sleeve, 10 inches. Wait, seam allowance. Then I will draw into a straight line. So now I've turned it into a straight line. Then I will insert half of my hand hole which is 8.5, then plus seam allowance. And then my sleeve opening is six and a half. This is six and a half, then plus one in seam allowance, that will make it seven and a half. And I'll then connect with my pan curve. So I've connected it with my pan curve. So the next thing now is to take the handhold curve again and join it. And then your sleeve is ready. See that so can you see how it looks so now let me show you everything all over again so this is the front panel can you see so in case you want a sweet up neck you should do that before cutting off the dart but I will just show you and show you how it looks so I want to make sure it matches So now the sweetheart neck 
after determining the depth like this i just use six inches then let me use my handhold curve can you see that so then i will go this way Then I'll cut it off just to show you how it looks like when you are having a sweet tart neck. I'll just show you half of the pattern. So can you see what it looks like? You see, so by the time you sew it, then this is what you have. Can you see that? And this is the sleeve. Can you see? It matches up with the handhold for the basic bodies. So that is just it on the front panel, you can see. So you can do any type of neckline you want. And I will show you the back pattern again. And this is for the back. Can you see that? So that is just it on how to make an off shoulder pattern. Can you see to make an off shoulder pattern is so easy. And don't forget to join us on Facebook. I will show you a lot of people said they did not get the spelling right. So this is it on Facebook, Sewing Innovations. Can you see that? And then this is my own Facebook name. In case you can't get it, so you could search for my name. And on IG, just search for Blicky Signature. You can follow me there. So bye for now. And do not forget to subscribe and tell your friends about it. Bye, bye, bye.